Peggy 18. So here we are in this interrogation scene. So uh, it's important to know that this is a scene that you may see or totally miss, depending on how you played the previous scene. And for me, this was the longest series of options. Obviously, there's so many dialogue choices so that we would record them in sequence, depending yep. on what the player would choose. Yeah, and I remember it. It was one of the very first scenes that we shot, right? Just, just We, we shot Hostage first, right. and uh, then we shot uh, The Attic, the conclusion in the previous scene, and then we shoot this one. It's, uh, it's been quite a ch very challenging shooting for all actors, for you first, because there was a lot of lines, as you said. Also for Cornelius, because he had to express something without saying much at the beginning, and then he has more to say. For me, one of the more difficult things, Cornelius is such a powerful actor that I had a hard time not having an emotional response to what he was doing, because Connor, of course, doesn't feel for him at all, but mm -hmm. uh, it's very difficult to not be empathetic to what Cornelius was doing in the scene. Yeah, and here we see Connor trying different tactics, trying to find a way to make him talk, but Cornelius wouldn't say anything. So you try the nice way, you try the hard way, and of course this is the player choosing. Right. And here when we filmed this, there was the, the set was a mesh table, yep. uh, so that they could see the markers through the table. Yep. Uh, his handcuffs were a, a piece of very soft rope, uh, so that we had nothing reflective to mess with the, the <laughs> markers. Um, there was, of course, uh, lines on the ground that would tell us where the doors were, where the mirror is, the, uh, where we would look through and talk to Hank and the other detectives in the other room. And another thing we had to do was reset always the physicality so that depending on what the player's choice would be, Connor had to return to a neutral position so that yeah. it would uh, have a continuity in between. So we would have a, each choice and then the choice would kind of resolve to Connor's Android listening. Position. Yeah, and maybe we need to explain how we shoot this because it's, it was a real challenge for you and all actors. I mean, it's as we have different choices and dialogues, of course, the actor needs to shoot all lines in a row, right. even if there, there is no continuity, direct continuity, because the player can only pick up one of the many choices. So uh, I don't know how you do to remember all these things, but, <laughs> but you did. Repetition, <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah, you came so prepared, I mean, for this. It was really, really impressive. I didn't remember, want to let you down, David. No, that's true. <laughs> but I remember when you arrived with your notebook, yeah. where you had all the charts and diagrams and stuff. And I didn't have a clue what, what it meant, but it, it yeah. seemed to mean something to you. <laughs> Perhaps Deckard means but it worked. charts. It worked. Yeah. It worked. It's easier to memorize things for me visually, if you assign it to something visual. Oh, that's the hard. You know, the, the markers, the cameras that in the background remind me of the infrared cameras on yeah, the performance <laughs> capture set. True, it looks is that an inspiration same. directly or um, has it happened? I don't know, it just happened, I think. I mean, this is a big opportunity for the player to determine how they're going to start to interact with the androids. I mean, you, your, your behavior in this scene might be a good precursor to the rest of the game. Yeah, and it's a nice way to uh, for the player to create the characterization of Connor. What kind of Connor does he want? Does he want someone who is very manipulative and very nice or very hard? I mean, what kind of what, what version of Connor is that? And it's it what was nice in the writing was also to have very different emotions and have Connor switching from one intention to another right. because he doesn't really feel these emotions, he just fake them. Right. So it's like he can switch very quickly from being nice to be being Exactly. Yeah. And the, the stronger those choices we made on set, the more uh, mm -hmm. impactful making... Is impactful a word? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the more impact the player has when they make a choice, they, uh, there's more of a direction happening. Yeah, and for a scene like this, if I remember well, it took us, what, two days? Yeah, we shot this scene over two days. This was a long scene to shoot. Because yeah, it's funny because the scene, the final scene is, what, 15, 15 minutes something? And, and it took us two days to shoot the whole thing. One of, one of my favorite things in video games is the uh, when you're designing your character in a lot of games at the, at the top of the game before you play anything, you can choose their hair, you can choose their mm -hmm. weapons, you can build your character. And I think what's cool about this game is you take that element and you bring it over the entire script so that in a very intimate way you're determining not just what does this character look like, what weapons do they have, but mm -hmm. what kind of a character does this character have, mm -hmm. which I think is cool. So we, we, regarding cinematography, we worked um, quite closely to the characters and as the tension grows, we get closer and closer. It was nice to play with the mirrors, the mirror in the back, 
Yeah, the amount of detail is incredible. I mean, this blew me away. I saw a screenshot of Cornelius's character that they release, and I mean, the facial animation team did an amazing job. It's very yeah, cool. Yeah, they did. This android that doesn't even have a name because his owner didn't see a person in him and just treated him as an object. One, one of the many challenges that I have as a writer is really to write characters that will be consistent mm. in their characterization while offering options to the player to play with the characterization and, and give their own version of Connor. And uh, that's a fascinating part of the, of, of the work, but it's also a very challenging one. You don't want to offer any option that would break the characterization of a character, but at right. the same time you need to offer enough options to the player so he feels that he can really contribute yeah. to the story. Well, that's what I was doing with mapping it out, so that you, you know, traditionally you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, so that you know, even if you film out of order, where the character is in their own journey, but here we have no uh, control over how the player chooses to express Connor. So the thing, the way I imagined it was uh, layers of, in Photoshop, layers, mm -hmm. or in uh, transparencies mm -hmm. on an old school overhead, mm -hmm. so that in one scene, if he's this color Connor, and in the next scene, he's this color Connor, that mm -hmm. as the light shines through it, depending on how you've played, you might end up with a most green Connor or a most red Connor. So well, I, I felt that was very useful uh, to you because it's we, we need to explain that we didn't shoot in chronological order. Not at all. <laughs> so we, we had to jump a little bit for production reasons. Right. For example, I, if I remember well, all, all the scenes with uh, Clancy Brown were, were shot in a row. Right. So we, we had to play with chronology a little bit. And it's true that for a character like Connor, who evolves a lot and, and has a, a real arc, it was very useful to know where we were in the arc, so right. I felt your, th this part of your work was very, very useful. Cool. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, this scene in particular was quite complex to write and to shoot. Yeah. I think it was a, a real challenge for, for, for both actors. Um, well, and this is where Connor is using most of his protocol to deal with the different tactics that he might choose, because, uh, you know, of course we're have the investigation and looking for clues the the you know the staying on the mission element is present in all of the scenes yep. but in this scene we get to really go into the minutia of the interpersonal skills that would be programmed into them so this part was a nightmare to shoot because we had all actors on set at the same time because they were all interacting together right. so we had five in a small environment and with a lot of contacts and cornelius trying to fight and defend himself so, and there are many different outcomes to this scene too. Yeah, so I mean, depending on absolutely. How the, the player is uh, interacting even with these guys after the interrogation is over, it could go a number of different ways. Right, and shooting all the versions, all the, all the permutations of the endings was some work. Yeah. I don't think there is a good ending or a bad ending to this. Is there are, it's like the rest of the game. There are just different versions of the scene yeah. telling you different things. Right. And I think this is one of the earliest opportunities in the game for the player to be rewarded for their uh, empathetic uh, tendencies. Yeah. I don't know if we can include that. Absolutely. But, uh, it is a bit of a foreshadowing of the kinds of decisions you're going to have to make with Connor the rest of the game. Absolutely. I remember during the play test, we were filming the face of the people playing it as they were playing. It was funny to see their face if, if you get killed. Yeah, I wish people would keep Connor alive. I wish. I mean, they have a good reason to do so because it may have an impact on the story. Right. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, this was, to me, this was like a dream come true, man. I, I, before we even met for the very first audition a long, long, long time ago, I was thinking for myself, what kind of work do I really want to do? And when I imagined performance capture and the work of Andy Serkis and other actors like him, uh, this was something that I sort of uh, dreamed might happen. And then when the audition came through, and then it just so happened to also be set in Detroit, which was personally very cool to me. I don't know if somebody else designed this moment, but uh, I feel very much like this project was uh, meant to be for the two of us to cross paths. Yeah. From my perspective, you know that you had the right cast when you can't imagine any other actor in, in the part. And for me, um, Connor, you are Connor, and I can't imagine anyone else playing this part. So, uh, oh, I shucks. Think it was pretty good, good cast. For the players.